know, you work right, right on the back side of my office. I do, I do. You're just around the so street. We're in the same area. And uh, who, who's your guest? This is Roger Grimes, uh, Uber trainer, deluxe, uh, MCT, MCSE, MVP for security, plus uh, what, what non-Microsoft certifications do you have, like everything? About 40 of them, uh, CISSP, TICSA, CPA, CPA. <laughs> I need a whole Wikipedia just for all those. I know. Right. <laughs> I hand out a tent card for my business card. So yeah. that, uh, <laughs> people really respect when you have 40 or 50 certifications. You know, yeah. They think you're in the real field all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are you doing here at Microsoft right now? Uh, I uh, Actually learning about IE7 and IS7 and talking about ways to evangelize uh, Windows security, ISS7. It's like, we, you know, everybody knows Microsoft. We know that Microsoft has the best security, but why don't all the Linux Unix guys know that? Yeah. So thinking about ways to increase visibility and, and things like that. And I do a lot of training. I've always considered myself like an unofficial uh, Windows security evangelist because I know we have the best security. So we've actually been brainstorming ways to get that get more visible. Why, why do you think it is that Mike Shustel is tied with, that, with low security? Uh, uninformed people, but I'd say a big piece of it is, is we're still, people still think that Windows security is the same security there was with Windows 95. Yeah. You know, before there were firewalls and NTFS and people are still bringing up code red. Uh, I know some of the, I'm, I talk to some of the world's best security experts in the world about different issues and they're highly uninformed. They're still, again, acting like our operating system is what it was 10 years ago. I teach for, I teach ultimate hacking for Foundstone. I teach for SANS. Uh, I teach a lot of conferences and some of the world's best people uh, have these old preconceived notions that, that haven't been true for like five or ten years. So I've got this saying saying, if you don't keep acting like my OS is ten years old, I won't blame you about your ten year old OS. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, for some reason we get picked on all the time for old security, but you don't find people saying that some Linux client from ten years ago or five years ago is something we could validly complain about. Yeah. There's a lot of false preconceived uh, notions that are spread because I don't know. People, uh, I don't know, maybe it's poor teachers, maybe uh, somebody suggested one of our meetings today it was Code Red and Nimdo. <laughs> you know, did us, did us in, you know, and that's certainly, or the, the Gartner Group study, you know, came out how many years ago? Four years ago. Four years ago, and you still see a ton of hits on how IIS is insecure. Well, Gartner's come out and said, no, IIS is a secure platform, it's a great one to use, um, and you still see people quoting the old. Uh, the old resource, and if you Google yeah. on it, you can't even find the good survey. I've done things like I recently had a hack IIS six contest, and invited people to come hack it, and the world came and attacked it. And Unix and Linux and Apache people and all that stuff, and they didn't hack it. I mean, but for some reason, that message is not going to get out there near as far as if they had actually hacked it. <laughs> yeah. Had they hacked it, it would have been slash dotted and everywhere. Uh, so, well, where do you go for good security information? You know, where where do you go? Where is the authoritative source to learn how secure one product is or another? That's my problem. Is I, I don't know where to go. You know? Yeah, actually, that's something we've been talking about today. Is trying to we, Microsoft has actually most of the good resources about how good security is, and has a lot of comparative analysis against different operating systems. And we talked about that. Is how we need to get visibility, and then give them a simple link to get to. So that's something we talked about doing today. Yeah. Was uh, even helping like people like the MVP program. You know, we're the people that evangelize and love uh, Microsoft the most. Yet when we're trying to get information or data to back up something, when you're trying to fight some false accusation, even we don't know where to go. So it'd be nice to have one link. Uh, they go to to go, hey, by the way, did you know Apache has had 27 exploits since March 2003 against IIS's two or three? Yeah. <laughs> well, where do you go for those kinds of stats? Who um, keeps those kinds of stats? Yeah, for like the number of exploits. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of different sites. For Seconia, so W-W-S-E-C-U-N-I-A -uh, is a great resource where you can actually put in the product and tell it to search for what's the number of Apache exploits. Or Firefox, another great example. Go to Sirconia.com, and it shows that Firefox has had like 22 or 27 exploits in the same time period that IE6 has had like 28 or 29, something like that. So I tell people, so look at this. This browser has hardly been out at all. It's not that popular, and it has almost as many exploits as IE. I said, so its market share is like 3 or 4 or 5 percent. How many exploits do you think it's going to have once it has a greater market share? Do you think it's going to have less? You know. 
So that, that's the type of statistics to get out there. A lot of people, they're still attacking IIS like it's IIS 4. I mean, it's amazing. It's so much secure. And, IIS is? Uh, Internet Information Server. Yep. Or service. You know, sometimes you got to guess what the S is. Actually, I think it's service. Services. Take Services. Your pick, take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that uh, I still see a lot of it. And I, I tell people all the time, let's say like ACLs. Like if you go, I use a lot of Linux. What's an ACL? Uh, uh, access Control List of Security Permission or a List of Security Permissions. But I use a, a lot of Linux distributions and, uh, and Optics and FreeBSD and stuff like that. And on the Linux Unix side, they've got like three ACLs, three security permissions, read, write, and execute. In the Windows environment, we have 14. Wow. You know, the granularity of the control is phenomenal. And the default security is actually pretty tight. I'm even doing, a, I'm writing my fifth book called uh, Professional Hardening of Windows Desktop and Servers, and I've been reviewing all the default security, and i got to tell you, it, it's pretty darn tight. If you don't have your end user logged in as administrator, it by default yeah. will defeat 70 to 90 percent of all attacks today. Yeah. I mean, so how long is I Mike? wrote a big blog, uh, blog post where I said the 14 layers of security, and the big one is in the, turning off administrator rights. When you do that, my friends don't get spyware anymore. You know, that's yeah, right. and that's they can't load anything. <laughs> they right. got to switch back out and you know put a password in to actually install something, and that that usually stops them. <laughs> it stops almost everything. Yeah. And I, I teach a lot of uh, hacking Windows hacking classes. You know, those types of classes where you teach people how to hack into a system and then teach them how to defend against it so they won't be hacked. But there's a dir dirty little secret in that field, and that's that we can't run Windows Server 2003, and we can't run uh, Windows XP Service Pack 2 because they don't allow us to hack. Yeah. Almost every hacking tool that we use doesn't work under XP Service XP Service Pack 2, and Server 2003 is so secure that most of those classes are still using Windows Server 2000 unpatched. Yeah. And if they use an XP, they're doing XP Pro unpatched. I mean, it's like this dirty little secret. And I've been working with one of the organizations, a trusted organization or a worldwide organization, trying to make a Server 2003 hack class. And I got to tell you, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> We're doing a lot of searching. Uh, we're literally coming up saying that we have to uh, make a misconfiguration error or intentionally put in some type of vulnerability because by default it's a pretty secure operating system. Uh, and so that, that's kind of interesting is that even the yeah. people making the money off of Windows and securities, oh, they're not using the latest stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing I find out is you've got these people that used to be knowledgeable in Windows, maybe Windows NT or Windows 2000, that for whatever reason haven't kept up with it, and they don't know about the, the great strides that are made in Windows security, and it's just tons better. Or like the, the Hacking Exposed book, you know, yeah. Hacking Server 2003, that book should have been eight pages long yeah. for stuff that <laughs> would have worked against Server 2003. Um, you know, so there's still, uh, and at that time, there's lots of other courses. So there's a, there's a big misconception. I mean, a big part of it is, you know, you're all the biggest target and that sort of stuff. But another part is, I think maybe the technology changed so fast. You know, like I think everybody's got to breathe in a little bit of a sigh of relief that Longhorns <laughs> not coming out in 2005 because uh, we're still trying to catch up with everything we had to learn for Server 2003 and XP yeah. Pro. Um, so I think a lot, there's a lot of people that just didn't keep up with the pace of it, and so they're, they're living on these old preconceived notions. Like so many people still think that if you start, uh, if you get a new share, uh, that everyone gets full control, you know, and that's so wrong because it never was the case. A share did get everyone full control up to 2,000, but the NTFS permission behind the scenes never allowed that by default, or very rarely. And since XP Pro, it's been everyone read. Yeah. I mean, but so so we're sitting here defending ourselves against something that was really never was true. Yeah. And uh, and, and if it was even possibly true, it was Windows, Windows NT 4.0. Yeah. Um. One thing I, I wrote about was um, security. You know, if you go to a bank, they don't just have a vault, right? They have a vault, and they have a counter, and they have. Cameras and they have doors and they, you know, they. Security words, guards, right? Yeah, well, they have they have layers of security. You mm -hmm. know, if you want to make a secure system, you don't just do one thing. You have a, a bunch of things, right? You have a Defense firewall, in depth. right? You know, when you get a computer now, you don't hook it right into the into your uh, broadband. You buy a firewall device of some kind, or a, even a NAT would block most of, of the stuff. So you. You know, you have a few layers between you and the bad guys. Well, absolutely and true. But, you know, my pet peeve is, and I heard this just recently, someone saying, oh, you plug XP Pro into the Internet and it's compromised in seven minutes. 
It's hockey. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a try. I do all the time, and my stuff doesn't get compromised. Well, I mean, not if you have XP, SP2. Certainly. If you have XP, you can get... I, I've got yeah, yeah, certainly. But again, how long has XP2 uh, been out? Been six months? Yeah. You know, but even with, uh, S, uh, even with XP and, and Service Pack 1, if you put it out there, they are compromisable, but it isn't seven minutes, you know, or, or 15 minutes. And if, if, again, how anybody can say, let's put out an old operating system, even though the new stuff has been out for six months, we're still going to put out this old statistic is deplorable to me. And again, like you said, we're always going to put a firewall out there. But I know lots of people that do server 2003 and don't put a firewall out there or only use uh, an Internet connection firewall or Windows firewall or right. somebody that's testing doing IPsec only, and they don't get compromised. They, no. don't, do, they don't do stupid but things. But they, they have a firewall built into the OS. I'm talking about OSs that don't have the firewall turned on, like, like XP original, right? And you can still find a lot of XP boxes that don't have the firewall turned on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I guess, again, if someone's going to talk about poor security, let's at least talk w about what's been out the last few months. I mean, let's yeah. not drag back the last year to come up with something. Or Server 2003 again. You know, it's a, I hear people all the time still tell me how insecure it is and, like, have you tried it? Or do you use it? And, and they're like, well, no. Yeah. You know, they're relying upon in the window and rumors they hear. And I, I say that's a, it's a big mindset. Well, that gets us back to the IIS conversation, like the fact that we still have perception issues about IIS being an insecure platform. But, but uh, you know, people who use it and people who are relying on it and the thousands, of hundreds of thousands of customers that we have using it, you know, that's not the case. Yeah. And you can look at the history of it and you can see, you know, what we've, we've had two related patches since RTM, re, you know, released to manufacturing for IS6 Windows 2003. And those weren't like serious buffer overflow issues. Um, and not to say that'll never happen, but it hasn't happened since since release and that's... How long is it? Is it March 2003 is when uh, Server 2003 and IS were officially released. I mean... In, in a, but this comes down to trust in Microsoft, right? I mean, I, and Microsoft doesn't have a lot of trust. Let's just be honest; doesn't have a lot of trust out in the community. And that's why we were discussing: is like, how do we, how do you go about communicating basically the record that we already have? Because even though we, you can say in a community, since we don't recent uh, like Port 80 software, Port 80 software.com did a study and shows that IIS is in 53 percent of the Fortune 1000. Well, those people trust us. Yeah. So how come that message isn't getting to the rest of the world? Yeah. And uh, what do we have to do to get there? That's you know above the board on a technical basis, not oh we're the best thing that ever shipped. But here's the record, you know. Let, and that, let yeah, that get speak. the facts. Yeah. Uh, one of my big pushes was one of the reasons why I showed up today was to say that I believe that it has to be more of a techie approach. That we see a lot of the uh, PC magazine ads and stuff. You open up and it's like, where do you want to go today? Well, I'll tell you personally, I would like to get the facts out on the table how there is no operating system that comes to, to, to anything as close as what group policy gives you, uh, that the security is significantly stronger than it is. I want a full-page ad to sit there and say, Microsoft is the most secure operating system, popular operating system you can buy today. It's almost as if sometimes Microsoft is scared to be a bragger a little bit about something because in the past they got burnt. And we yeah. certainly don't want to do Oracle and call ourselves unbreakable. Yeah. But uh, I would somewhere there needs to be we need to be more visible, mm -hmm. take a different tactic, and I personally think it has to be with more facts instead of saying you know where do you want to go to today? Let's say group policy. There's no other operating system today that comes close to the flexibility uh, that group policy has. That if you have an out a worm outbreak, that you can shut down the impacted service across your entire worldwide enterprise in 15 minutes with six clicks of a mouse. How would you do wow, that? Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it depends. You'd have to have propagation. But let's say 15 minutes, within five minutes across your domain controllers and pushing it out. Uh, so there's sort of, I'd say uh, if you were to stretch that and go worldwide, let's say three hours. Yeah. But suppose Linux, I, Linux or Apple doesn't have anything Nothing. Like that. No, yeah, a Apple's laughable. <laughs> they have nothing like group policy. But if you look on the Linux side, uh, Novell with their Zenworks being ported, are starting, they're, they're starting to get some of that, but the Red Hat and, and, and all the rest prior to the Novell thing, they had nothing like that. If you ask a, a Linux guy, uh, and I've got lots of Linux friends, I use Linux from 3BSD, well, how would you do that across your large enterprise? They're like, well, I'd write a script. I was like, but they, oh, you got to be careful because scripts work differently on the different distros. And, and I was like, well, how would you push that out? Well, I pushed it out with a cron job. I was like, well, how would you get to the cron? Well, you know, what do you do with group policy? Click, 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 click. You know, uh, a good example is like 
recently there was released that Java proxy DLL exploit, and Microsoft hasn't released a patch yet. But one of the workarounds they said is take the ACLs on the file and say that users can't read it, so they can't have it exploited. So you know, make it a, secure the user from being able to touch that file. I can do that in group policy with five clicks of a mouse. I mean, it's a relatively easy thing to do, and then wait three hours, and my entire enterprise is protected against that attack. You can't do that in Unix or Linux. Um, I, I, you know, I want to scream at the top of my lungs that, you know, Server 2003 is secure by default, and somebody has to go out of their way to misconfigure it or make a, a programming mistake to make it insecure. Uh, I want to scream at the top of my well, lungs. Well, 2003, that's why I have that for a second. But that's completely different than XP, right? I, for instance, the, there's a lot of things turned off on uh, Server 2003 that weren't turned off on XP. Right? Yeah, absolutely. IE, for instance, right, is not. Uh, uh, has I remember, the, right, there's a smaller footprint. There is a smaller. There's, yeah. the, there's the advanced security lockdown. You can't browse to something unless you specifically say you trust it, and that's on by default in, uh, on the server. Yeah. But. And that's as it should be, because in most cases, particularly like on a web server, you've got real no reason to be browsing from your web server. Absolutely. But on a client, of course, it's a client system, so you want Internet Explorer to be a much more seamless experience. Yeah, but you have to, tr as a user, you have to turn it on. You I have to turn it on, and if you do have it on, you're probably going to turn it off, because it's hard to use, really. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to use from a client perspective. Yeah. Um, because the, the, every time you go to a new URL, you're saying, yes, I trust you, yes, I trust you, yes. And maybe after three or four weeks, it'd be better for you, but still, uh, I turn it off. Well, yeah. And again, I mean, there's other issues like EFS. I have a lot of clients and a lot of people, a lot of mailing lists will say, I'm looking for file and folder encryption that is strong and uh, seamless and reliable. And I'm like, well, use EFS. They're like, no, no, I meant secure. I'm like, it is secure. Well, I heard you can break it. I'm like, well, if you look at the break tools, or uh, EFS tools that can break EFS, they're actually recovering the local administrator password. You know, and once you've recovered the local administrator password, there's lots of other issues in your life besides them recovering EFS. Yeah. And Microsoft has workarounds by changing the DRA and that sort of stuff. So I wish there was more should say EFS is strong security. I mean, that's what I, that's a, uh, somewhat uh, I feel, you know, we get all these, we get the Rolling Stones commercials and the nice little, what do you want to be today in imagination? I wish somewhere, a lot of people, we don't have the visibility on the default security that Windows has, and I think we need to hit them in the face. But is, is there a third party you can go to for these issues to say, you know, to ask? or Because obviously if you ask a Microsoft guy, oh, yeah, it's, you know, and we don't have much trust, right? You have more trust because you don't work here, right? Um, but somebody who really studies this and has authority and has a brand built up over being trustworthy is somebody who would yeah. be, be Is there somebody like that? Well, Sakunia, you said, but yeah. they do stats. Is there somebody who really does more security work? That, that it's it's tough to find that because you got to remember the guys doing security work, they earn their money off of fear. Um, so most companies that are trying to earn a lot of money aren't going to tell you the default product's relatively secure. They're trying to sell you something or consulting or, um, and again, I, I work with a lot of companies, large companies, large training companies, and I'd say the vast majority of their trainers don't really understand XP Pro and Server 2003. I know they don't. Yeah. So they're actually still propagating old, in, you know, old insecurities that are no longer true. Yeah. Uh, I heard a guy the other day, he's probably, you know, multi-millionaire many times over, owner of a large company, very popular guy in the trade presses, and he was tell telling the uh, the crowd how I IIS's FTP server directory was the same as the web server directory, which I don't know if it's ever been true, but if it was true, it was IIS 2 or 3. They had, yeah. Well, I not pun, you know, FTP root. So it's INET pub, FTP root, and then there's a www root, but those are different directories. Right, right, right. Than INET pub. So this guy was training, and he was actually training advanced security consultants and, yes. and sales engineers one day on a particular exploit that was possible because of that. And uh, and I was assisting in that particular class, and I wanted to go, hey, that's not true what you're teaching. Uh, but it's I mean, it's a lot of things. I mean, it's uh, some people don't understand NTFS permissions well. You know, and, and I, I guess in my experience, about 60% of the trainers teach NTFS permissions wrong. 
Interesting. And so well, if you're trying to... Uh, s simple little things like if you have, a, probably one of the most common mistakes I'll see is if you have share and NTFS permissions together, uh, people will tell you well, if you have share permissions and NTFS permissions, you're going to take the least permissive permission out of the okay. two. But the truth is the least permissive set of permissions. You're going to take this or this. You're not just picking a single permission out of it. But almost all the students I'll quiz, if I give them the opportunity, they almost always, if, if, this, if the share permission, or if the NT, let's say the share is full control and NTFS, is read and write. If you ask them to pick the effective permissions, they all about 60, 70 percent will pick read. Interesting. And like you know, when I explain to them, wait a minute, this gave you full control. How could you not have what's over here? And it's because they've been taught wrong. And it, it's that times lots of issues like that. Um, it's sad, but the average Windows administrator has no idea what the default uh, permissions are on anything on the root directory. I mean, shouldn't we, after 10 or 15 years of using Windows, know what the default permissions are? Yeah. And they don't know, so it's it's kind of interesting. We teach a lot of the advanced stuff, and I, and I tell, as a matter of fact, I've got an article. I'm a, I just recently got appointed to be InfoWorld security columnist, huh? and uh, one of the articles I have is called "Take a Stand Down." You know, when the Army and the Navy have a whole bunch of airplane crashes, they say, "Hey, we're going to do a stand down for the week, figure out what the problem is, and address it." And regardless of whether they need a new regulation or they just need better compliance of an existing regulation, a week later the plane crashes stop for a while. I, th I wish companies, instead of buying IPSs and IDSs and new antivirus tools, would take a stand down and look at their NTFS permissions because that's your best bang for the buck. Instead of trying to buy your way out of a security hole, take your staff and retrain them better and have them look at the existing free stuff. It's the best bang for the buck. But instead, yeah. the CIO or the CSO or whatever seems, oh, let's buy this new IPS, which isn't going to work. IPS it, is what? Uh, intrusion Prevention System. Yeah. Uh, but those are guaranteed to fail. Antivirus is guaranteed to fail. Firewalls, guaranteed to fail. There's something going to get by it all the time, but good ACLs, good NTFS permissions, won't fail you. Yeah. Don't have your end user logged in as administrator. I mean, if we can't get you past that, or if we can't stop unauthorized software execution, the rest of it is because you won't do what you need to do in the first place. The rest of it is approximations of security. Yeah. Real security is NTFS permissions, stopping unauthorized executables. Everything else is because administrators refuse to accept those two rules, and they're just approximations. Everything else would fail. So that's one of my big pushes is if you're a network administrator, look at your NTFS permissions and mm -hmm. how can you examine what they should be if you don't even know what the defaults are. Yeah. Right. That's a really good point because I, I think the defaults are, are key. And when I was doing IIS training, I always would say basically the same thing because I think that NTFS permissions really are your bottom line on security because if you do get hacked, your you know, user contacts that you're in and the NTFS permissions are going to prevent people from doing things that, are, uh, that they shouldn't be doing on the server. And if you're not paying attention to that, if you're saying, well, we're just going to assume the firewall's doing our job and the IS server is just going to roll over in that case, you're not doing yourself any favors. I always said, secure your server as if you didn't have a firewall. Mm -hmm. Because then you know you're 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 doing a good thing for your your business and you're acting uh, and uh, you know the firewall goes out of the way and your server stands up and says sorry you got to conquer this hill too and guess what you're not going to get there if you do the right job because the server's going to stand up and those IS servers I mean they're rock solid when they're done well they're, yeah. they really are and that's something that Microsoft hasn't really done a, a good a job and before I was in Microsoft I would do the same thing I'd, and. And, you know, we, I really appreciated your question about, well, you know, Microsoft, no one's going to believe us in a certain way. Uh, and that's true because, you know, you had a badge on, so you're a Microsoft employee. But it's sort of like, I know Microsoft has really been doing its, uh, a good job of hiring industry experts in this area. And, yep. and one of the reasons is because people like me, I came from an independent background. And I, Microsoft did a bad job with IIS Server. I would be the first to say, I'm sorry, this isn't working. But, you know, with IIS 6, the story was so sweet. It was just like, it's like selling Porsches or something, you know, you yeah. just stand up and go. And seven's <laughs> way even better. It's even better. That's like yeah. selling Ferraris, you know, it's yeah. kind of like, it's look Scott at this Godfrey guy. told me they went through 8,000 security reviews, you know, and each review takes 30 minutes to an hour to do, an hour and a half. The security, so the, there's a significant investment in just they, reviewing yeah. the code, you know. So. Well, yeah, and here, I guess one of the other big things I, re I realized today, and, and me and Brett have been talking about, is that, we know that Windows has some of the best security of any popular operating system and product suite today, 
we, in most cases, even have the information already collected. There's this report and that report and this comparative report, but if we don't get the visibility, if we can't communicate, all the rest of it is for naught. If we can't somehow get people to look at the information, to start the conversation, on technical means, then that's the key. The billions yeah. of dollars, the billions of dollars you spend on security was for naught. I mean, you can make you can make IIS seven as tight as you want, but if we still got people living with it as ISS four, it was a whole lot of effort for not a lot of payback. So uh, that's made me realize that somehow we have to get the conversation more visible. And again, I would love to. I'm appealing to you know Steve Bomber, Bill Gates, the advertising department, Wagner, Ekstrom. And all that stuff, full page ads about how we have really good security. Yeah. We we need, but would that really convince anybody? I, I, I start the conversation. Yeah, start. I mean, uh, uh, Brad and I have talked about uh, putting an ad that says something like, "I hate Microsoft software" on the first page, you know, in a fold out, and you open it back up, and the guy says, "That's what I used to say." And today, it's the only software I would ever use, and here's why. Yeah. I mean, the problem is, is to engage the conversation. We, uh, I got through the Hack IS 6 contest, maybe it wasn't the best way to engage the conversation, but we ended up having lots of conversations on Slashdot and on Broadband.com and some other places where that conversation had never been brought up. And uh, what I was excited to see is about 50% of the people responding defended us, yeah. said, you're not going to be able to break that box. I mean, and you know, you had a bunch of people saying, oh, it's going to fall in 15 minutes. And then a guy would write back in 15 minutes later and said, did you do it yet, guy? Yeah. You know, because he knew he couldn't do it. And so sometimes it's the visibility of the conversation is the only way we're going to get people to re-examine the issue. Yeah. We need to open up new minds. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, helping us uh, get it out there. And uh, we'll start the conversation and see where it goes on Channel 9. Cool. Anything else uh, that we should cover? Just, uh, you know, look out for IS7, information coming your way. Oh, yeah. And some really, really cool stuff. Just, I, I just say, prepare to be amazed. That's yeah. all I can really say right now. It's, it's going to be amazing. PDC. Look for us as PDC. Very cool. Thanks. Thanks, Roger. Thanks for having me.